that he wanted to end the censorship and end the surveillance and the propaganda. And that he wanted to end, put an end, the weaponization of law enforcement agencies against the American political system. And that he wanted to end this corrupt merger of state and corporate power that has turned our regulatory agencies predatory against the American public. And he said, that he wanted to make America healthy again. <laughs> and end the chronic disease epidemic that is destroying our children. And that is an existential threat to our nation. When my uncle was president and I was a 10-year-old boy, the rate of chronic disease in this country was 6%. Today, it's 60%. When my uncle was president, we spent zero on chronic disease in this country. There were no drugs to treat it. Today, we spend $4.3 trillion. $4.3 trillion. That's five times our military budget. It's the largest cost to our nation, and it is bankrupting us. And it is destroying us morally. Because we are betraying our children by letting these industries poison them. I don't know anybody with ADD, ADHD, speech delay, language delay, sleep disorders, Tourette's syndrome, narcolepsy, ASD, or autism. The autism rate in my generation today in 70-year-old men is 1 in 10,000. The autism rate in our children is 1 in 34. In California, as Callie just said, it's 1 in 24. And the rate in boys is much higher. We also saw this explosion of autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease and lupus and juvenile diabetes, all of these exotic diseases that we never heard of as a kid. The diabetes rate when I was a kid was effectively zero. A typical pediatrician, when I was a young boy, would see one case of diabetes in his lifetime, in his career, a 40 or 50 year career. Today, one out of every three children who walks through his office door is diabetic or pre-diabetic. And nobody's talking about it. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody is recognizing that we are being mass poisoned by big pharma and big food. and all these allergic diseases that suddenly appeared. I never knew a kid anywhere in any of the schools that I went to that had a peanut allergy or food allergies or eczema. What is happening to our children? And I saw this happening and I began writing about it and the media rose up and silenced me in 2005. And nobody would talk about it. The doctors wouldn't talk about it. The pediatricians wouldn't talk about it. The scientists, the government officials. And people warned me, if you keep talking about this, you're going to destroy your career. And I was stunned by this. And for 19 years, since 2005, I spent 30 minutes praying every day when I get out of bed. And I... And my prayer is this. I asked God for 19 years to put me in a position where I could end the chronic disease epidemic and bring health back to our children. So, as soon as Donald Trump started talking about giving me the power, he asked me to do three things. 
He asked me to root out the corruption. And end the conflicts of interest in our regulatory agencies. And end this corporate capture that has turned our regulatory agencies into sock puppets. The industries they're supposed to regulate. And he asked me to restore the tradition of gold standard, empirically based, evidence-based science and medicine in our regulatory agencies. And to restore the transparency so that these agencies have to must stop hiding science from us when it clashes with the commercial ambitions of the, of the pharmaceutical industry. And he doesn't want me to take vaccines away from people. If you want to take a vaccine, you ought to be able to take it. We believe in free choice in this country. Well, you ought to know the risks and benefits of everything you take. And we need good science for that. And we need informed consent. And he asked me to do that, and then he asked me to end the chronic disease epidemic in this country. And he said, and he said, I want to see results, measurable results, in the diminishment of chronic disease within two years. And I said, Mr. President, I will do that. So, this has caused a lot of aggravation and, and apoplexy among a certain class of the medical elites. And today, the Washington Post and NBC and the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal all did articles. talking about what a catastrophe it's going to be if I get anywhere near the medical establishment. And I read the articles because I wanted to see the names of the people who were denouncing me. And every one of them is on the pharma payroll. These are what the media calls experts, but these are the same experts and made us the sickest country in the history of the world. Whatever they're doing is not working. We had, during this country, these are the guys who gave us the COVID countermeasures, which shut down our schools, which closed our churches, which shut down 3.3 million businesses in this country all the little businesses and they left open the Walmarts and Facebook and all of the big people who were cashing in on the pandemic. And these are the people who are treating disease for them, for these people. The most valuable asset in America is a sick child. They don't want your child dead, they want him sick for life. So then he's dependent on their products. And every, and the more statins they prescribe for heart disease, the more heart disease goes up. The more metaphorum they prescribe for diabetes, the more diabetes we have. The more antidepressants they prescribe, the more people we have who are depressed. The more Ambien they describe, the more insomnia there is. And so these drugs, their formula, this pharmaceutical paradigm, is not working, and President Trump wants to do something different. So whatever they're doing does not work. And don't you want a president who is going to fix this country? Don't you want a president who's going to end the addiction to foreign wars? And and don't you want a president who's going to end their censorship and surveillance and return freedom of speech to our country?